You hanging in, big bro? Uh, I'm just your half-brother now, little. Are you serious? You have been my big brother for 40 years. And if you think Frank coming to town is going to change that, boy, you crazy. How are you handling everything? I don't know. Changes by the hour. Is there anything I can do? Well, I was going to loop PJ in. Yeah, uh, our little brother is going to freak. Yeah. I don't think I want to be the messenger. I'll talk to him. How's uh, mom and pa Dad. What was it like having them in New York? Not gonna lie, there were some bumps in the road. I refereed a good old Patterson smackdown right before the segment and had to have Dad do the show by himself. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> that was a good call. So you the one who changed Mom's mind about being with Frank? You know, I'm not sure. Let me tell you what I am sure of. Our troubles, my need to create drama in every relationship, and your substance abuse, they're rooted in our family dynamic. Well, there's some truth to that. But we're not our parents, Patrick. All our drama and our baggage. We can say it ends right here, right now. You're saying I have control over my situation? Well, aren't you the one who always says awareness is just the first step? Yeah, I do. So Mary Jane is now uh, learning that a bomb has gone off in her family. Uh, she's been up in New York, and meanwhile, Patrick has been dealing with all kinds of um, strife there with the revelation that came out in the previous episode that Paul is not his real father. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we titled this episode Feeling Destined because part of it is, is feeling like there is a straight line from some of the choices that Paul and Helen made to some of the issues and problems that Mary Jane and Patrick are both dealing with. Yeah, yeah, no, it was definitely an intense, intense uh, episode to to mine into the real family dynamic and how we've how we've arrived at this place where we are right now as, as, as people. Give yourself a hand. Tell each other if you need help, all right? Your family. That was Patrick, hope you don't mind me uh, dropping in on you like this, but these are unusual circumstances. Thought maybe we could uh, grab a cup of coffee, have a chat. You want to talk? And you chose to show up here. Your mother broke your anonymity. Yeah, mom thinks the rules don't apply to her. You know you can't tell Helen what to do. Yeah, you got that right. But I'm not some schoolboy looking for a pat on the back. Yeah, but neither am I. So what do you say? This is the episode where Patrick actually gets to a face-to-face -face with Frank, right? Right. Um, so, and gets to... As, at one of the meetings, yeah. Yeah, at one of the meetings yeah. is this, like, one, you know, sort of recovering addict to another. Yeah. Um, and uh, what was interesting about that, we specifically used the language of N.A. and things, like, when, as they are talking to each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's something Patrick can can identify with, with Frank, definitely, for sure. And that they, there's a loss, though. There's, like, a sense of, you know, of a disconnect, I think, because Frank could have been there, and then it could have really helped what I was going through with the addictions and things like that, and somebody who really understood. Mm -hmm. But um, didn't really have that at all, you know. I appreciate that letter, but I got an apology to make you upsetting your mother to the point where she couldn't do the segment with us. Everything turned out in the end, right? Yeah, but I still feel awful about it. I haven't seen the two of you argue like that in years. Are you okay, Dad? <laughs> yeah, I tell you, it's a bitter pill to swallow, knowing after 40 years of being together, I'm still not enough. Paul, I want the damage to stop here. I'm not going to be with Frank. Thank you for sharing, Ellen. But that doesn't change anything for me. I still want a divorce. Helen is grappling with this decision about, you know, Frank wants her to come with him mm -hmm. to New Orleans and mm -hmm. start a life together. We imagine she was at a similar crossroads back when she was first right. with Frank. Right. And determining sort of what to do 
in that situation. And here she was again, where you know she she had a dis sort of decision to make. Yeah, I, th I think uh, I think because it's, it's it's really that, that weird question about old wounds. You know, like when you open up an old wound, and how he had to deal with that. Because you know, I I love how we how we tell the story. Really, uh, Patrick and Mary Jane. There was a lot of arguing, arguing, and. Uh, and, and problems as they were growing up with, between the two parents, and we didn't understand what it was coming from, or and and realizing that Paul had to continue to forgive her and accept her and, and accept us and accept the situation, and now here it is again. I think after all this time, 40 years, and he he would think that now she would finally love him enough or love him more than uh, than Frank that she did back then after all they've been through, and then still here she could be at the same moment, you know, at the same crossroads of choosing and, and still having these feelings for Frank at the same time like that. I think those are the, the things that we were looking to explore. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, that's why we referred to Frank as sort of the flame and, mm -hmm. and as uh, Paul as sort of the, uh, the, the candle, um, because it is sort of like this thing between love and kind of passionate love right. and, and obligation and responsibility and in some ways maturity. But, and um, Mary Jane also deals with that. I feel like with, with the Justin, it's a great juxtaposition, you know? Absolutely, absolutely. So now they have um, illuminated or had these things illuminated, both Patrick and Mary Jane. So, you know, it'll be interesting to see where they each take it, you know, in these like final two episodes. So we'll see. <laughs>